morning, good afternoon, maybe good evening for some of you all. Um, my name is Inka. I am an in-house producer here at Remo. Hello, hello, welcome. Lots of people from the UK. We got some Canadians in here, Indonesia. Welcome everyone. Today we are here to talk about webinars. Um, we are here to talk about webinars, reimagine how to create with a deep insight. And today, you all are lucky enough to have a presentation done by Hoyin, the founder of Remo. Um, Hoyin will also be here towards the end to um, have a conversation with you, um, answer any questions that you may have about the platform. Hoyin is a serial entrepreneur. He's a project manager. He's a digital marketer with an eight-figure Amazon business a mobile agency, and also $10 million ARR B2B SaaS company. His core passions lie in helping businesses to grow in a scalable way with software tools. He's, he's Tim, with software tools his team develops. Hoyin has over seven plus years of experience building remote teams and has worked with Fortune 100 companies like Nike, Best Buy, TJ Maxx, SunGuard, Cardinal Health, and Kaiser Permanente. With experience in scaling three high growth companies from zero to multi-million dollars in revenue, Hoyen loves building businesses and processes for scale. He has developed expertise in creating and developing a B2B sales team, product management, and growth marketing. Hoyen, come on up to the stage with me. Hello, hello. Hello. Welcome, welcome. The stage is yours, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, everyone. My name is Ho Yin. Thank you guys for all coming. Give me a thumbs up. You guys can click on the thumbs up emoji, emoji right downstairs. Give me a thumbs up. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now that's, oh, we got one confused face. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will love, thank you for the, for, for that, guys. Um, Feel free to hit the hit the uh, emoji button whenever you get a chance. Give me some feedback. Uh, let's let's kind of see uh, kind of what we uh, get some feedback for you today. Um, so I'm going to start the presentation. I'm going to talk about um, webinars uh, reimagined, uh, creating collaborative gatherings with deep data insights. Um, so I'm going to start off and uh, talk about that. I'm really passionate about how to make webinars and online virtual events of uh, not only just fully interactive but creating an amazing great experience because creating amazing great experiences creates engagement and what it, when you create engagement that better um uh helps your audience uh learn faster um uh, they're easy, they're more convinced um they're it's more persuasive um, it helps you accomplish your goals so I'm going to talk about why collaborative gatherings, why they're important, um, and how that uh, they could help achieve your goals. I'm going to share a little bit on how to build engaging content, some tips here. Um, and by the way, everything in here, it's, it's some really quick tips. I've got even more, but I just wanted to share some great ideas and how to use data to derive insights um, uh, just with general platforms as well, but some data that that Remo provides um, as well on top. So these insights, these data insights, you can apply to your other platforms that you may use for virtual events, but also on Remo. And also I'm gonna share some emerging best practices um, for uh, virtual events that uh, we are seeing today. Um, why collaborative gatherings? So I'm gonna start off with that. So um, the way how people learn, uh, I have a, I just had a, a nine month old boy. Um, he's nine months old and I observe, and for, for, the, for the parents out there, uh, you probably observe, you know, how does a child learn? You know, how do children learn so fast? How do they, how do they, how do they um, pick up things? And 
what's funny is that how a child learns is actually very overall pretty much the same as how an adult learns. And they, they primarily do these four things. They observe someone else doing the task, as you know, um, kids and adults, we see someone do it, we mimic it. We listen to how others do it, like a seminar, like something like this, um, or when someone teaching them. Peer-to-peer -peer discussions, meaning many-to-many -many interactions, it's not a one-to-many, it's many-to-many. -many. So for, uh, for example, children, when they talk to each other, or, or, or you know, just as adults, so we talk to each other, share stories. And finally, is actually applying the learning actively. When you have these four ways to learn, that's, that is what is most effective. So what's crazy is that collaborative gatherings do all of these key learning activities at the same time. It provides the best learning and education to your audience, whether you're selling a new product or teaching your leads value for the surf. It applies to all across the board. And that's why collaborative gatherings are so powerful because it maximizes the engagement versus me you know, just sharing something and then um, and you kind of like absorbing and being a more collaborative is much more effective. So I'm going to go on to the next topic, which is how do you build um, engaging content? So I'm going to share with you some ideas here. Um, a lot of things that are um, interesting. And by the way, if you guys have any uh, questions or answers, feel free to enter it into the Q&A. Um, and then uh, I will um, answer, answer them. One of the, ideas, one of the things that um, we see other people frequently do is they bring audience members up to ask questions. And we I would love to do that here as well. So if you have a question, um, you know, feel free to raise your hand. You can click on the raise hand button. I'll bring you up and we can like, ask, we can help, uh, it can ask questions. And what this does is that it just keeps the, the, the whole presentation very dynamic and allows, you know, just like as if you're at a physical event, like a real event, somebody puts their hand up and asks a question and you try to, we try to make that as human as possible. That allows people to see, oh, hey, someone else is, is, answer, is asking a question. Um, it just feels more human. Um, asking uh, questions to the audience often and using polls um, is also very, very effective. So we obviously have like a Q&A function. Um, some of our customers use the Q&A function for polls. Um, so, so for example, um, people use the different uh, answers in Q&A and basically like, uh, vote on them um, to see uh, what what uh, what questions that um, uh, sorry what sort of what are kind of like the, the most popular um, uh, uh, aspects that that you might want to have questions to. So there's just one product that we love to see, um, and it's called we love to use and we use it internally, and it's called Aha Slides. And what it is is it incorporates polling. It incorporates word cloud. It incorporates all types and sorts of, of really engaging um, um, ways to uh, engage your audience. It's fun. Um, it, it's basically a separate link where they, they can type in, um, you know, answers or they can participate. They can you can use it for trivia. You can use it for quizzes. You can use it for anything. And it's high, high engagement. We get our most highest engagement rates in our internal events um, th through the use of AHA slides. And I highly recommend it. And it's and it's really very, very affordable, if not free in most cases. So when it comes to event engagement, um, there's a lot of things that you can do. And a lot of people only think about just inside the event. They don't think about pre-event and they don't think about post-event. So there's a lot of pre-event stuff that you could do. Um, like for example, um, uh, uh, if, like that allows the customer to, or sorry, allows the audience to like, you know, have an expectation to know kind of what, what you want to do prior going to the event. And of course, at, during the event, you have a lot of social call to actions that you can tell people to share your socials, you can do networking um, and, and, and so forth. On post events, um, you can do a lot of marketing emails afterwards. Um, and obviously like, uh, uh, for example, like a question that we had was uploading a, uh, the presentation afterwards and sending that out. A lot of the post event that can be done providing summaries of the events uh, is also like a really, really good effective way to keep people engaged. So how do you use data to derive um, a lot of the insights that um, uh, from, from the data that from the event that you just hosted? So 
there's right here we have is a really mixture of many different types of metrics, some that are more standard um, across uh, most uh, webinar or virtual event platforms and some that are more unique. Um, I'm going to go through them high, overall at a, uh, at a very high level, and then I'm going to go through some of them a little bit deeper. So pre-event, obviously, you have number of registrations, page views, and um, open um, and actually clicks. Um, inside the event, you have uh, specific to Remo, uh, we are creating a report right now that upon request, we can actually generate this report for you. And it can tell you things like, what was the average number of table hops? Um, what was the audience emojis? I'm going to share with you that a little bit more. What were the quality of the conversation, the average number of the conversations? Now at Remo, we're um, be able to produce a custom report for you. Um, our goal is to provide this inside the product where you can actually review and see it. But now we're, we're providing it on a more of a manual basis to kind of make sure that um, you guys get the information that you want and is a little bit more, more custom for you. Um, we got. We also have attendance retention rate, and also like in event NPS, which is uh, currently like an alpha feature. And then post event metrics is obviously like the pipeline, the revenue generated, and 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 certain like happiness metrics that you could potentially you can potentially have. So specifically on Remo and any other virtual event platforms, um, we track um, a lot of things where we see that uh, an individual is really really engaged. So for example, the average number of floor floors people move to. So in Remo, we can have up to 10 floors. People can move into different floors. And why this is important is sometimes they will meet someone or they want to meet someone and they want to jump to a different floor. Or they've met all the people on their current floor and they want to go to the next floor. This is a high indication of them trying to embed themselves in the network, in the community, um, and wanting to talk to people. Um, and the average number of table moves, which is the average number of tables people go from one to the next. And this is really important as well because not just similar to floors, but this is within the floor itself. Um, this determines like the number of conversations that they have. So that 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 goes to the next one. If you have more table moves, typically people have more number of unique conversations, and that's a really good metric for measuring engagement um, and also measurement of how much networking that they're doing. Um, and also a percentage of business card clicks. So um, this is a feature that we have, and we're now going to be promoting this feature even more. Um, but you're going to be able to, uh, so right now the feature, you're able to click on someone's circle and it will show you their business card. That business card, uh, we're going to track like how many clicks that they're going to, um, that people have. We can actually uh, do this metric. And that will also be an indication of how much networking that's actually going on within um, within the uh, within the event um, that is a really good output because if you're creating webinars and you're creating uh, or, or even community events if the people within that audience are connecting a lot um, that all leads to uh, engagement that will bring over to your next event or even towards the front because then they recognize uh, the importance of the community um, that you are you're offering and you're providing to them so this is a graph where we have is, um, for example, like Romoji actions over time. So um, oh, what, what we have here is basically like, you know, what's the rate of Romojis that people are, 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 are posting, right? So um, we have, uh, we've had, uh, so for, for example, at the beginning, we had a lot of, you know, Romojis, and then we can measure how much that Romojis kind of continue over time. So um, this is really effective um, for uh, this feature is, uh, is is still an alpha, but but this is something that we can internally show for ourselves, and we can, do, we can. But this is really interesting because you can actually evaluate what type, which speakers, and at what point in your event where people were most excited about, and those are things that you can then replicate and try to say, okay, this worked really really well. We should do more of that. And so um, this is this is these are some of the examples of like some of the things that we can uh, that we want to provide. Um, another thing where we have is, is basically conversation length, like how long are people having conversations for? At Remo, what we're very uh, well known for is that events tend to like they're very hard to shut like Remo events early or on time because people want to talk more. 
And so this gives us um, a, a good sense of like how long are people um, discussing about stuff. And this also provides a good indicator of the quality of the conversation. So the longer the conversation, we assume the, the higher the qual the higher and better the quality is, and the higher chance that those individuals will continue on um, having a relationship, uh, you know, continue on building more meaningful relationships, um, or potentially like um, uh, understanding more about your sales proposition, or or you know whatever it is the activity that you are doing within within the Remo platform. Um, this was pretty obvious. We have sponsor banners, um, and in the sponsor banners, we have um, we have sponsor banners on the left uh, on the right hand side of the map. And being able to click into those sponsor banners, that will open up a pop up box, and that pop up box might be an image or a YouTube video with a call to action. And so this shows how many people clicked on the sponsor, and it shows how many people actually like clicked through it. Uh, and that click on that button goes to a website or a link or URL of your choice. And so um, that is really is really critical because now you can talk to your sponsors. You can also evaluate some of the call to actions that you have uh, on that. Now we have this already um, in Remo. Um, you know, we're this is just a kind of like a graphical version of it. So this is kind of like showing a tennis drop off drop off rate. So YouTube has this, a lot of platforms have this, um, and it's how it's how do attendees drop off like over time. And this is really uh, important because uh, just like kind of like emojis, you can see at what point people were dropping off um, in the event. Um, what were things that were keeping them? What were things that were not keeping them? Um, this is something that is a metric that um, a lot of other virtual events platforms have. Um, this is something that we're working on. So this is more of like a generic uh, metric. Uh, we're working on trying to develop this, um, but this is an example of a really, really good effective metric so you can measure uh, what was really engaging. So right now I'm gonna go through and talk about some best practices um, that we see as uh, really, really effective. Um, so we have, I have this sort of like 15, 20, 15 rule and what 15, 20, 15 rule means is that you have about 10 to 15 minutes of networking in the beginning. People kind of connect, they network a little bit, and then you have about 20 minutes of presentation. Um, and it's in, and for me, the presentation part, if you use Remo for presentation, it's the shorter the better. Really, the presentation part is to really kind of prompt for topics for discussion um, and to allow people to um, really uh, talk to people to understand more, ask more specific questions, talk in small groups to talk about specific topics, to really stimulate that sort of learning that happens. Um, and so we always try to structure our events like that. And you get a chance to do that right afterwards. And so for people who have, um, you know, you're trying to drive a specific um, uh, initiative or trying to sell a product or service or trying to get people to do a certain thing, um, encouraging people to stay afterwards is really, really effective in order to get them to take that next step. So um, for some e emerging trends and um, uh, best practices we've seen is, you know, creating cost memorable and engaging experiences for online attendees. And for Remo is to create custom floor plans. But for any kind of virtual event platform, it's just very, you know, you want to create a memorable experience. And so, you know, we've been working on um, uh, providing, you know, more and more tools um, and more and more maps to provide amazing experiences uh, for for people and having a branded experience makes it even better. Uh, branded experience uh, or custom floor plans where our customers use, we see engagement uh, to be like 3x more uh, than if you don't use a floor plan and it's up to five to six x more compared to other virtual event platforms because it's so relevant to what you're doing. It has your own branding, it has the topic that you're talking about, it has all of that stuff. So um, it increases engagement like crazy. It's just very, very effective. Um, another another kind of like technique is, is like in the pre-event email, uh, in the welcome message, you give your audience um, a role of what to do kind of in the moment they arrive. And we've seen some companies do this very, very successfully. 
Um, so for example, like, hey, you are a guest, feel free to move and learn about others as you're doing this challenge, XXX challenge, ask questions to get the combo started. So when people come in to the space, they need some direction as to what they need to do and what role they're playing. Um, and we've seen that to be like very, very effective, um, especially uh, like in Remo. Um, and a lot of that is a lot of onboarding that you can do uh, before the event, uh, uh, before the event starts, right when the event starts, um, this gives them kind of like a mission, like kind of like a purpose of like what they need to do. Um, this is something that's a little bit more uh, intense. Um, this is uh, the secret library. This is um, basically a uh, really complex map, but very fun map, a very experiential map where they can create escape rooms, murder mystery dinners. Um, they can create very, very highly experiential uh, experiences. Um, this is something where you can do for large conferences. Maybe you have sponsors that are coming in. Um, it, this is like an emerging event trend that we're seeing is creating much more experiential um, spaces to allow people to um, uh, to do things. So in this one, like each room is like a different room and then each room will have a whiteboard and it will give you the instructions that you want to, um, you want to, you, you, you know, what's like what you need to do in that room. Um, and this is something that's pretty, uh, it's pretty awesome. It's, it's um, the secret library, this, this company does amazing experiences. If you guys need contacts for that, just let one of um, the people at Remo know and we can um, share kind of um, share contacts there. Um, so what one of the things where that we, we see is very effective is um, is that when our our product is really focused on small group interactions um, and encouraging small groups to kind of interact and engage is, is really important. So you're playing sort of this host slash moderator. Um, and a lot of things that what we do is we'll go into a table, you know, we'll at, we'll, you know, we'll engage with them. You know, we'll even, we absolutely what things that we do sometimes is um we we see people kind of sitting by themselves we'll like get there's like a function where you can get them so you can right click on the circle and it says get uh like hogan or something like my name and they'll invite them into the table and so that prevents people like prevents wallflowers prevents people kind of just sitting there sitting at their own table not knowing what to do so there is a little bit of moderation that kind of happens especially at the beginning um but as the house becomes more and more full, you don't really have to do that. Like people just gradually just start turning their mic and cam. It kind of just kind of goes on its own. But at the beginning, you can kind of encourage people to kind of do that and create that networking. Um, it's just that little bit of um, uh, a spice to kind of like encourage that. Um, one of the things that we've noticed is very effective is like, you know, after a lot of events, um, you drive them towards a community platform like Money Networks or Slack to kind of continue that conversation. Um, we've seen that to be very effective. Like your typical sort of route is you um, have people go to, um, uh, like they will they will connect each other on LinkedIn, they will connect each other on uh, maybe, maybe a Facebook Messenger or something. But what you really want to do is to drive them to a one cohesive space, one common space where they all can continue connecting and you can continue to engage them afterwards, talk to them about the next event and, and all that stuff. Um, here's a really interesting story. Um, and this is something where we've tried this in our community. Um, and one of the things that I think uh, uh, it, this is really, really interesting. So this company is called Pizza Time. Pizza Time. That's, that's the name of the company. <laughs> and what Pizza Time does is it's a global pizza delivery service. And we did this for our community. We had 70 signups and we had 65 people show up. Like the attendance rate was like through the roof. It was like a 90 something percent attendance rate. Um, based off registrations. And one of the, so what, we, what Pizza Time does is you get people to book, like register and book their, register and they book their pizza um, at right before the event. And Pizza Time gets all those orders. You enter your address, you know, you know where you're at and et cetera. And, and no matter where you are in the world, Pizza Time will organize 
and deliver that pizza to your doorstep right before the event. Anywhere in the world. And we did um, we did this at uh, our Remo community, um, and it it just generated it, it was it was fantastic. And here's like kind of all the photos that you that you can see here. So this was like really, really um, super fun. Um, it's not too expensive. Um, if you want to drive attendance and drop tons of engagement, you know, just like in real life, it applies online as well. Food is uh, is a really great motivator. I gotta I gotta tell you that for sure. Food is an amazing motivator. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the things is to provide giveaways. Um, giveaways, you know, to say thank you at events uh, for sponsorship business. Like it's it's something that everybody always always likes is to give away stuff. Um, uh, it could be like your merchandise or uh, you know other things that that might be relevant. So it's just those are sort sort of like really, really good ways to encourage engagement. Yeah, and this is something that we kind of like mentioned before, which is summarizing the event recordings transcriptions to kind of re-engage them. Um, and then, uh, okay. All right, so it's for Q&A. Um, Glenn, yes, we will have the presentation afterwards. Um, yes, we will have that. I'm just gonna answer some quick Q&A right now. Um, how do we get access to those event engagements in Remo? So right now we're doing it on a custom custom basis. Um, we're doing it on request only. Um, so it's still something that we're we're working towards. So um, it's it's something that we're we're manually you know pulling for now, and then we're going to be building and making it more official. Um, so we'll be building it so that it's easier like it's easier for you to access it on the platform uh, very very soon. Uh, Glenn, yeah, sure. Um, I'll have. Uh, Glenn, can you please reach out to, um, please reach out to Noemi and she will give you the, uh, the contact for that or, or Noemi, please contact Glenn for that. Andy Sanford, same, same, same answer. Uh, we will be, um, yep. Thank you. Thank you for the thumbs up. Um, can we access the data? Uh, same, uh, same answer as I said before. Um, can you elaborate on the idea? Yeah, sure. So elaborate on the idea of giving a role to the audience. So what I mean is that like sometimes audience members when they come in and they want to they want to whether it is you want to get them to network, whether there is like you know they are there to um to to do like for example a a one on one matching or um speed dating or a workshop like using the welcome message and giving them that purpose of hey. This is what you are kind of you're kind of giving them instructions on what they're supposed to do, basically. And but but it's it's um it's a role where they understand who they are, what they're going to do, and what their goal is. So if you're having a um, speed networking event, right, and you say, "Hey, welcome to Remo. We're here to uh, network with others. Um, please find a table and find someone that you would love to talk about, and ask them these three questions." You, you you can be a bit prescriptive. Now they don't have to do and ask those three questions, but it gives them like a sense of like, okay, like I could ask these three questions and do that. It gives them a very, very specific role on what to do. And it's just more clear. And um and it and it helps you customize that event so that they know what they what what they could potentially get out of it. Um I would like to get info about the multiple rooms. How do I get that? I think you're talking about the secret library. Um, I'll have no, I mean, you can just maybe send me Genevieve a private message. Do you find that turning on the lobby helps eliminate wallflowers and awkwardness of people trickling in the conference at the start? Um, so we, it's, it depends. It depends. It depends on how much instruction you give. It depends on event is. Um, it depends on how much moderate, moderation that you do. Um, it, it also depends on the, the audience too. I have not been able, we, we have not been able to see any clear pattern around that. Um, and so we've, unfortunately, we, we haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. Um, Katrina, can you please put in the community link as well? I'll put in the link for our community. That'd be fantastic. Um, I'm going to answer a few more questions here. Um, okay. Um, 
Is it possible to charge ticket guests for events if such a dumpster remote? Yeah. So, um, okay. Give me a thumbs up if you guys can hear me. Can you guys give me a thumbs up? Okay, perfect. Oh my gosh, seeing those. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, is it possible? It's, um, if so, it's done through remote. So you can do that currently by uh, doing the integration with Eventbrite. We don't do that right now, um, but we're thinking about it. We're thinking about it. How do you create custom floor plans? So you can work with, we have a list of custom floor plan designers that you can work with, and you can basically interact. Um, you can, uh, uh, we can help you link you with one of them. Um, I don't have the name of, of the individual who asked that question. So just uh, ping Katrina. Uh, she's here and she can help you with that. Um, okay. Um, is there a giveaway feature on Remo? If not, have you? Have, yeah. So um, we don't have a giveaway feature on Remo. It's more of like you know, just announce like we, you have a giveaway and you just kind of randomly pick someone and say, "Oh, hey, this person has won. We can give it away." Or you can do that after the fact as well. Um, yeah, you can do that after the fact. We don't we don't have a giveaway feature. You can just do it presentation uh yeah name wheels as well yeah perfect thank you thank you guys so um uh, i'm gonna uh, kind of take a pause here we're gonna go back to the floor um please stick around um i'm i would love to learn more about everyone's needs if you guys have specific questions on how um uh, uh, I, any questions about engagement how i can improve and achieve your goals um, please let me know um, I'll be down there and chatting. Also, network with other people because there's there's a lot of like opportunity to learn from them as well. So please stick around for like about 10, 15 minutes um, and um, network and like and uh, and hang out. Uh, thank you guys so much for chatting. I will see you guys down in the conversation mode. Thank you. And I'm going to give it back to Yinka. I think Yinka is going to actually go to come up. Okay, I'm going to answer a few more questions while uh, Yinka is uh, um, trying um, while, while we wait for Yinka to come back. Um, so the pricing for Remo is really, uh, really quickly. So in for, for the pricing, we have um, three tiers of pricing, um, four packages of pricing, actually. And for the pricing, it's it ranges from $100 to $2,000 paid a month, and you can host basically unlimited events. And um, each pricing tier, the difference is that it's just a different number, maximum number of people you can have um, in your in your event. Um, there's some other limitations too, like the number of people you can have in each table. On the lower side, you can only have a maximum of four. On the higher side, you can have um, a maximum of um, of eight. Um, and so that allows um, uh, for us to, if, for you to have more people on the table, just like we have right now. Okay, Yinka, uh, I will see you guys down there. Yinka, are we ready to go back down? <laughs> 